John Gonzalez, and the company is called Insperity, and we do HR out outsourcing. Awesome. And that, what does that entail? Like, what exactly are you doing, and what services are you helping businesses or clients with? Sure. The idea is to get smaller, to provide smaller businesses with five employees or fifteen or twenty-five employees the same type of environment and experience that their employees would have at a big Fortune 500, Fortune 100 company. We provide them the technology and the people um, to help them through the hiring process all the way to retirement. Okay, so when you talk about the environment, the same as like Fortune 500 companies and bigger companies, what exactly does that mean for the smaller companies? Correct, the idea of the field where I start um, with the, the even the interview process. What does that process look like? What does the, uh, even even further back, what does the process of um, sending out a job description, you know, how often do they think about what that means? You know, with a bigger company, they've got, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 people working on these things and, and specifically for a division, you know, they, they craft the job description, you know, who they're looking for. They have people out there recruiting, looking for these people, you know, looking through, you know, LinkedIn and other profiles to figure out who the best matches are and, and who, who, um, who to interview and who to take to the next level. Smaller businesses, 5, 10, 15, 25 employees, it's usually the CEO or the founder of the organization trying to do all that. So our goal is to help them um, starting from that hiring process all the way to the retirement process. Um, providing the technology that big companies have, you know, a, a mobile app, um, uh, a website for employees to go to, to log in, to see all their information, to learn about the company, how to grow. We give them the technology of how to um, uh, do better at their job or um, do a different job. Um, somebody wants to be a manager, how, what does that look like? You know, we, we provide the technology and the, the videos and that sort of education just like a larger company you know, would, um, again, right there on their phone, right there on their app, right there on their, on their website. Um, same with benefits, you know, providing benefits, you know, 401k and health insurance, very similar to a big company. Most small companies uh, a lot of times don't even have uh, health insurance or a, a retirement plan because they're mm -hmm. too small or they just don't know how to provide that to, to, uh, to employees of that, you know, of five or 10 or 15, 25 employees. And that's where we come into play and we, we, provide that for them, similar to a very large company. Wow, that is amazing because you actually don't stop to think about those small companies and how much help they actually do need with running their business and figuring out like, okay, I need to put this up to hire, I need to look for somebody, but what exactly do I put and who am I really looking for? Like, what does this position entail? So that is awesome where you come in and you Correct. help them fill in those gaps and help them like make it an easy transition to do all of that. Correct. So I think Correct. that is amazing. Yep. How did you get started in this industry? Like, what made you want to do a business like this that helps the little guy? Sure, good question. So somebody actually reached out to me to try and sell me on the on the services because I have a pro bono organization called U.S. Charity Events where we just promote charity events across the country for free. And they looked at um, w what my website particularly, and they looked at all the things I, I do across the country and the organizations that I'm involved with. Because um, one of the biggest things is how to how to present insperity to even a nonprofit. Because same thing with a small organization, nonprofits pay a lot less. Typically, do not pay a lot uh, in benefits or any benefits um, mm -hmm. because you know they are a nonprofit organization. Um, so got into a conversation, and then uh, a recruiter actually reached out to me to have a conversation too, and said this is really in line with what we're trying to do in our culture. Because the idea with insperity also is that. If you do feel good about your small business and you're in a community, you want to go work for a small business. You, not everybody can work for a large, you know, Fortune 500 mm -hmm. type of company. And most small areas, like here in Leesburg, Loudoun County, you know, thrive on small businesses. So, in Sparity, they felt that, or we feel that, um, you know, if you are paid well, if you have the right benefits, you feel confident in your job, you're being trained the right way, like a big company you're gonna get involved with the community. You're gonna get involved with the culture of, of the company. You're gonna help the company grow. You're gonna brag about the company. You're gonna go volunteer at uh, church, uh, school, uh, you know, temple, little league, lacrosse, soccer, softball, whatever it may be. You're gonna get involved with nonprofits. You're not gonna be afraid to go 
and volunteer for the PTO or the PTA or volunteer for a charity, a Big Brothers Big Sisters, American Cancer Society, or a civic organization like a Rotary, a Kiwanis Club, um, because you're not afraid of having that structure in your company, you know, like a big Fortune 100, big Fortune 500 company, they're out there on LinkedIn promoting this and social media promoting that they encourage their individuals to do that. They encourage them to get out in the community because they're paying them well and they're, mm -hmm. you know, the culture's very good and they've got the benefits. So why not have that for a small business of Absolutely. someone that's 5, 15, 25, 50? So. Yes, I yeah. can agree more. Yeah. And now, speaking of lacrosse, I think I saw that you have a, a history of, like, with sports. I think coaching. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was an athlete my entire life and um, have four amazing kids. And uh, a lot of them are very athletic. Uh, my one daughter is in uh, runs track. The other one plays tennis. And my son, um, you mentioned lacrosse. He plays lacrosse, too, and swims and a football player wow, as well. Wow, busy. Yeah, so a friend of mine, again, me feeling comfortable about my job, I was okay, I have the time to volunteer to be a, you know, to be a coach. So um, got asked to do that by a, a friend of mine, his coach, my son's coach. So very rewarding um, to be involved, you know, being an athlete, you know, the fire never disappears. <laughs> yeah, it, just, right. it just changes a little bit. It my shifts. Yeah. It shifts, exactly. And now my fire, you know, can be, you know, uh, with coaching and, you know, not just my son, but, the, you know, the other, the other kids. kids. Yeah, exactly. So, and then even you know their kid, their uh, younger siblings, to see them excited about you know sport too, it's been very rewarding. So, awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that you have a little history there with like coaching and helping them get better, like the little oh, yeah. the little team. Yeah, and then absolutely. Watching them go absolutely. to a bigger league. But, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, as far as with your business, what are some issues that you have seen with companies that you, it's kind of like a trend where you're like, wow, suddenly everybody's like coming in asking for help with all of this. Um, what, is there anything in particular that you've seen? Yeah, I think right now it's probably the cost of health insurance because it's, mm -hmm. you know, can be astronomical, um, no matter, you know, what, who, who's in charge, who's elected, um, you know, it's, it's county by county, state by state, everything's so different and it's so difficult. Um, and when you have a situation, you know, where you might have a death in the family or a pregnancy that goes, um, you know, that your child has to be in the NICU for a week or two weeks, you know, a lot of times, you know, you see health insurance go through the roof and especially in the small business world, they don't know how to maneuver when, you know, one person with a five, you know, five employees, something happens dramatically, the cost for all five employees could go up, you know, considerably. And a lot of small business owners don't know how to forecast that or figure out what to do next. It's just a matter of, well, maybe I don't include health insurance anymore because I can't afford it. Um, we try and help them through that process to figure out, okay, what is the worst case scenario? What, you know, what do you do when this happens? How do we, how do we figure that out? You can't eliminate, you know, the risk, but mm -hmm. you can anticipate it and you know structure your your future around. Um, so we see a lot of that, a lot of questions about health insurance and the what if moments. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times it's after something like that happens. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do we do now? Instead of, okay, I, you know, I want to prepare for this. Not a lot of people are saying, I want to prepare for this mm -hmm. because I think this is going to happen to me. Where that's unfortunately, you know, they need to. You have to prepare for that worst case scenario. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You never know what could happen, so why not be prepared as opposed to not, right? Exactly. So exactly. And now, tell me a little bit about marketing. Like, how are you marketing what you do, what you offer to businesses and clients? Are you big on social media? Are you going to maybe BNI's or other networking groups? Sure, great question. Our company does a great job with providing us with a lot of content to post on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and other. You know, Instagram and other you know outlets. Um, they encourage us to get out in the community. Personally, I'm very uh, heavily involved in, say, Chamber of Commerce. There's you know Loudon Chamber of Commerce, the Reston Chamber of Commerce, Ar Arlington Cam Chamber of Commerce, the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce, Dulles Chamber. Of oh Commerce, my goodness! <laughs> member of a BNI, um, involved with Rotary, um, as well as uh, a lot of um, uh, nonprofit organizations. I'm on the board of a nonprofit called IAS, and they help individuals that are non-speaking, uh, mm -hmm. about 70% are autistic. Um, uh, the founder of the organization has come up with a, a, a thing called a letter board where they're able to point and start spelling. Yeah. Um, wow. So it's been very rewarding, get, again, getting involved with the community. Once you do that, you know, you go on a board, you're then involved with the board, you get to know board members, other industries, 
Um, so for me, it's been very involved with nonprofits and my nonprofit background with the U.S. charity events, um, being able to promote you know charities and being involved with them, going to charity walks and golf tournaments and you know different things, lunches and galas. Wow. Um, to me, that's that's where I like to do a lot of my marketing because you get to see people and you're not selling to them, you're having conversations. You're you making both have, an impact. Exactly, making an impact together, and it's usually like you know what do you do. And, I'll ask them what they do, and we'll have a conversation. Oh, I'm a lawyer. Oh, I, I do employment law. Oh, I'd love to refer you know somebody in to uh, to help and you know to help you uh, you know with insperity. I have this situation. I have that situation, and, and vice versa. Because okay. to me, that's what it's always about. You know, uh, helping somebody else first. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then someone's always gonna. It's the law of reciprocity. Yes. Right? Yes. So. And now, why is that so important to you? Like since the beginning, like what what touched you to want to give back to the community? Did something or anything happen where it yeah. kind of changed you? A yeah, bit? definitely, definitely. My parents, I would say, uh, the loss of my mom. She had lupus for a very long time. Oh, um, yeah, thanks. And uh, it was very difficult. Um, but I look back and saw uh, how often how, how everything she was involved with the community. You know, in church, in uh, in the schools. Uh, in you know Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, all those different things as kids, and then later in life when my dad passed away during COVID, um, I knew it came from him. Thank you, um, um, especially with the coaching and the inspiration and being involved, you know, uh, in my uh, occupation and stuff like that. But it wasn't until reading a lot of his things that he did, and I didn't realize it or didn't remember that you know he was involved with Rotary. He was involved with. Um, American Cancer Society, Red Cross Society, but he would also do outreach. And we grew up in a small little town in New Jersey called Woodstown, New Jersey, um, home of the longest continuously running Saturday night rodeo in the country called Caltown. I did I know. not know that. Okay. Not in Texas, not in Oklahoma, <laughs> New Jersey. Woodstown, New Jersey, yeah. Um, so I got to learn a lot about what he was doing, and he was inviting the presidents of the United States to come to our tiny little town. Mm-hmm to come speak at a luncheon. Uh, There was no galas or golf tournaments back then. It was just a luncheon or (laughs) go to the cafeteria at the high school or go to a church. Um, And I have letters that he would send to say, you know, Richard Nixon, you know, President Nixon and Carter and these different individuals inviting them. I don't have documentation or letters back from the presidents, but I do have them from different uh, chief of staff and different individuals. Um, So that was very fascinating to see that. And so a lot of people, you know, I've showed that to them and they said, see, this is where you get it from. Not just that you're involved with the community, Absolutely. but you're not afraid of asking someone, whether it's the president of the United States or the governor <laughs> yeah. or a local politician or, you know, CEO of a company to come out and support uh, a nonprofit and be involved with with certain things. So no, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah, and not just your dad, but your mom. Both of them yeah, were always absolutely. so involved in the community. So it's only right that you continue on that legacy, absolutely. right, with your absolutely. family and the Definitely. name. That is awesome. That's yeah. incredible. So you grew up in New Jersey. Yep. How did you end up in Northern Virginia, or how did that? Yeah, I, I came for uh, my uh, my wife who uh, lived in D.C. So we decided to you know come here and recreate. A life in uh, in Loudoun County. First moved to Ashburn, and then tried to move out to uh, Luckett's to do a winery. We were going to do a winery. We had about 13 acres. Oh wow! Yeah, and then we did all these things. We had kids right away, and I was a you know stay-at-home dad trying to do this, trying to do some consulting as well with a nonprofit space. And it took about an hour an acre just to mow. Oh um, man! Yeah, so it kind of defeated a little bit of the idea and this dream of having a winery. So decided, no, it was okay. Decided then to go and work for uh, a winery called RDV. It was the, one of the first $100 bottles of wine to come out of Virginia. Um, so I moved my passion a little bit, that flame, just like being an athlete, yeah. you know, the, the passion of wine and doing something with your hands. I just moved it over to somebody okay. else's dream. Pivot and help bit. Exactly, pivot <laughs> it a little bit, yeah, and help them with, with their dream. Um, so, you know, we... we uh, Ended up and been here for under about 16 years now. Wow, yeah. that is a long time now. Yeah, so yeah. you're basically like home, home. Yeah, Loudoun County's the home, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. now where do you see yourself five years, like with your company and with yourself as a person? Good question. Um, I think we're done, you know, having kids. We've got four amazing kids, you know, 15-year-old twin daughters, a 13-year-old wow. son, and a 5-year-old daughter. Um, so I, you know, to me, life's about them right now and seeing where they want to go, preparing for high school and their sports and their education, um, 
you know, getting them involved with the community, getting them involved with different things, planning for college, planning for, you know, um, you know anything else they want to do, whether they want to be athletes in, in college as well, and preparing them for what do they want to do, you know, in life. Um, so that, you know, that takes up a lot of uh, time, you know, mentally, you know, focusing on that and figuring that out, you know, with them. Um, you know, five years from now, business-wise, you know, I'd like to be at the top level of our, our company and be able to have, um, you know, enough, uh, clients that I've helped throughout the uh, the next five years and the past year that I've I've been there to help their businesses grow. I've yeah. seen that a lot with the clients I have uh, brought on. You know, we brought on and started about five or six or ten, and now they're growing up to twenty and thirty and wow. fifty employees. Um, so it's very rewarding, you know, to see that um, to get referrals from them yeah. um, because they can say, "Oh, this is what John did. This is what John and Insperity did. This is how they helped us." You know, grow, and now we're you know giving back to our you know community, whether it's in Florida or Oklahoma or New York or wherever it may be. That's awesome. Um, so again, I think you know just being there for the the kids, you know, 100% uh, focus on them, but also 100% focused on you know, which I know adds up to 200%, but yeah. it's a little okay. little difficult. But yeah. you know, trying to pivot your your uh, your mindset, you know, on a daily basis, right. on an hourly basis, from you know. What do the kids need? What do the kids want to? Okay, how do you provide for them? How do you help and grow exactly. your own business? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And now, currently with your business, um, how many employees do you have, or is it mostly just you? And you have maybe a couple? Or yeah. So it's really that? just me. We're all employed uh, individually. Um, we're called business performance advisors. So in this area, um, at a McLean, there's 30 of us, and then there's three admins, three district managers. And then uh, we have a staff that's in there about, say, 30 individuals that provide the HR services, the payroll experts, okay. the compliance experts, the benefits experts, safety experts, um, and different individuals to help then our, our clients. That is awesome. Yeah. And is there anything that you want people to know about your company and why they should hire you or why they should be looking into those services um, as a small company? Yeah, a good question. I mean, it's really about having the conversation. You know. Do you, what, what, are, what is your plan? Why did you start the company? And, you know, what's your plan after you started the company? Do you want to sell it, you know, in five years, 20 years, you know, 50 years? You know, do you want to turn it over to your kids? You know, what's your transition period? Do you want to grow? Does growth mean money? Does it mean a building? Does it mean multiple buildings? Does it mean multiple locations? Does it mean lots of employees or a little amount of employees, but lots of, you know, lots of, um, lots of revenue, lots of sales, you know, what that really means to someone. Um, and for me, it's about sitting down like this, you know, being able to invite someone to your kitchen table. My parents always said that, you know, like do business with the people that you want to have, you know, lunch, breakfast, dinner with, the people that you want to introduce your kids to or your parents to. Um, so to me, that's very important. And I feel like at the company level and Sparity, it's very much like that, no matter where we are in the country. Um, we do a lot of events. We're based out of Houston, so we do a lot of annual events there, semi-annual events there, you know, training sessions, and it's you know you hear the the culture, the story, you know, duplicated throughout the country. So it really feels good, and I think no matter where uh, a company is, a uh, potential you know client, they can feel good about what we provide, and we back that up. You know, been around since 1986, um, yeah. very strong public company, um, and again the focus of being. Um, you know, our culture to bring, you know, the passion to, you know, uh, an area and yeah. give back to that community so that community can thrive. Absolutely. Um, so. And now you say you hold events. Um, what kind of events are these and do you have any coming up right now? Yeah, so I'm involved with a lot of different charity events that I volunteer for. Um, Insperity, you know, does a lot of uh, sponsoring of those events, you know, little things like every Friday we'll do a office hours we call it on at top golf from two to five okay. where potential customers potential clients um, referral partners we call them center of influence cois um, we invite them to come uh, free of charge to just you know learn about insperity learn about what we do and um, we always invite a charity to come and speak and get to know people um, and learn about what we're trying to accomplish and, and why and why we think it's important to give back you know to your community so we do that every Friday. There's a lot of events that you know will pop up. You know, we'll do a, a dinner, a luncheon, um, a happy hour. You know, golf tournaments. Um, like I said, I think at the beginning, we focus a lot of time on GovCon and national security, startup tech. Mm -hmm. So 
we'll bring them together with some um, you know bankers or um, investment type individuals, venture capital, um, uh, private equity companies, and you know put them together on a golf course yeah. or in a you know get to know each other exactly understand you know what kind of needs they have outside of just HR and you know benefits. So, okay. Yeah. And now when you're not doing all of this, who are you as a person? What are your hobbies? If you have time, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. you're an entrepreneur, like yeah. it's hard to make time for yourself sometimes, yeah. but yeah. what do you like to do? Yeah, I mean it varies from day to day, especially because of, you know, the kids. You know, I spend a lot of time, you know, with them and their activities. So maybe, you know, walking, running, jogging during their events, um, you know, getting wow. your getting your steps in. My, Two for one. <laughs> yeah. So I come up with a goal of, you know, a minimum of 10, uh, 10 miles a day. And I was trying to do 100 floors a day. So it's, it's, it I'm is. I'm sorry, just funny, because yeah. I can't even picture myself doing yeah. this, but that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so it started at 50 <laughs> floors. And then I'm a easy math person. And it's I always want to double things, you know, because it's just easy math, right? So yeah. 50, let's do 100. Okay. So I did 100 floors, and then it was, okay, easy math. Well, can I do 200 floors? You know, <laughs> never thinking about how long this is going to take me. It's just <laughs> like, okay, I get up earlier. If I get up at 6, i got to get up at 4. Or if i you know, uh, running at you know, 6, i got to run till 8, or i got to run till 9 or 10 o'clock at night, whatever it may wow. be, to accomplish that. So I did. I accomplished the 200. Then I'm like, can I do it twice in the same week? And I did it on a Monday and say, uh, you know, on a Sunday. And I, you know, felt good about yeah. about that. So it's working those kind of things in while focusing on the kids and their activities. Yeah. Um, love golf, love the outdoors, love hiking, uh, biking, although I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, always love that. Um, the beach is my, oh, yeah. you know, the serenity, the, you know, just get my, you know, toes in the sand, the water, yes. listening to it, the feel of it. Either you can do a lot of stuff or do absolutely nothing, yes. you know, looking at, uh, picking up shells or yes, just watching people have fun, yeah. little kids, you know, or running around, throwing the ball around or, yeah. you know, adults, you know, surfing, uh, you know, oh so uh, definitely outdoors, things that are outdoors. Yeah, um, no, I yeah, think absolutely. that's great. Yeah. It's nothing like being outdoors. I know it's so easy to stay cooped up inside or like oh, yeah. scrolling your phone. So yeah. what if, when yeah. and if you can get outdoors, that is... Yeah. Everything. My dad used to have these sayings that were called uh, uh, blue skies and follow the sunshine. Um, That's true. And it's just, you know, he lived in Florida before he passed away, and I'd call him up, you know, daily. And I'm like, you know, Dad, how's, how's Sanibel Island? He's like, John, blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. Right. You know I what love I mean? that. And then later when uh, uh, he was actually in a wheelchair before he passed away, and we were at a sporting event down at, uh, in, in Tampa, and we were looking for this this suite that we we were going to, and the security guard, you know, said, "Oh, all you got to do is follow follow the sunshine." It's like what? He goes, "Just turn down there and follow the sunshine." <laughs> you were like, "Wait a like, minute!" Like yeah, and it was this little peak of sunshine right there. coming out from inside <laughs> of the stadium, and that was just like, "Oh, that was perfect." Right? Right? Combining blue skies with the sunshine, sunshine. and that's that. again the feeling I have when I go out and do you know, recreation, see outside, be outside. There's no sensation better than. Oh, I agree. Blue skies and follow the sunshine. So poetic. Yeah, Love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and is there anything that maybe I have missed? I want to make sure I get all those key points, make sure we get the word out there. Anything that you want to share that maybe I haven't touched on? Yeah, no, I think um, it's really, again, giving back to the community, getting involved. Um, there's so many things that, that are out there. I mean, Loudoun County alone, you know, 100 to 200 different nonprofits with all their events, you know, that they do in the D.C. area. There's, you know, thousands. So... For me, it's just about I love getting the word out there, and the more people that know about these events, the less the nonprofit organizations have to do um, to, and the cost of doing that, um, you know, the cost of promoting, the cost of getting out there in the community. Instead, they can focus on the projects and the people that they help, you know, because the need is huge. It's absolutely huge, whether it's yeah. military families, you know, uh, um, individuals that, um, you know, are homeless youth. It's just incredible. Someone that lost their job, someone mm -hmm. needs help with a resume writing, someone that needs, you know, a lift up, a hand up, you know, someone who needs, you know, shelter. Um, you know, here it is. We live in the wealthiest county in the entire world. We still have a lot of need. Uh, so it's really just about getting more people involved, more people engaged. Um, if you can't give your money, you can give your time and you give your, you know, expertise. You know? So Love that. I just want more people to know about that, I guess. That kind of yeah. goes hand in hand with my last question that I was going to ask sure. you yeah. of. If you could leave a message for our listeners, yep. 
what would that message be? It could tie into what you just said. It could yeah. be on another topic. Yeah. Or anything that's been in your heart that could be completely off topic. Yeah. I think it's really I think it's really that. You know, like give your time. Um, if you can't give your money, give your expertise, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, just you know, have that commitment. Write it down that you're doing it. You know, just pick one cause, one thing, you know, that that moves you. Um, whether it's coaching, whether it's getting involved with church, temple, school, um, or a or a nonprofit organization, just go ahead and do it. But write it down. Hold yourself accountable when you write things down. Um, look at it daily. Write it on you. You know, write it on your hand, um, just to remind you. Um, you know, some people write it on their mirror before they. Yeah, you know, lipstick. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Little things like that. Um, you know, and just to enjoy life, appreciate life, appreciate all that you have. I mean, it's great that, you know, you want more, um, but it's, you know, look at what you, what you have and look at the people around you that don't have maybe what you have and um, just lift somebody else up. There's always somebody out there that needs, you know, being, needs to be lifted up, you know, and do it for the right reasons. Don't do it to get something out of it. Do it because it feels good and, you know, but one day somebody will, you know, somebody will give back to you, whether it's holding the door for you, if you hold the door. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've stood in a you know, line for a coffee and you're buying a coffee and, and you know, I'm like, okay, what should I buy? I only have this much money, whatever. Next thing, somebody you know, buys your coffee. And I'm like, what just happened? And I'm like, okay, well, I gotta buy you know, somebody behind me. And you know, I've seen it in the, you know, the, the, uh, the drive-through lanes at a yeah, you know, fast food restaurant. It's just little things like that. They're you know, $2, $5, $10 purchases, but you leave there feeling so good. Yeah. But then that sense of obligation to give it back in some way. You know, again, the law of reciprocity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That's such a good message. I yeah. love that. It makes you feel really good and it's powerful. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here, for sharing Absolutely. your time and sharing your story and wisdom with us. We yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time.